Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, folks. It is Monday morning, and that means we start strong with Mr. Greg Dickerson in our expert series. How are you doing, sir? Doing great, Michael. Good to see you. I've been looking at this topic number three pretty much all weekend. Uh, I was reading several articles from Mohammed El Alarian over the weekend. I actually saw some YouTube interviews that were done that day or the day before, and he is getting very loud. He's typically very reserved. He speaks very well. You know, Harvard guy, blah, 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 or Yale, might have been Yale, one of those two, Yale or Harvard. Anyways, uh, he's out now getting very loud saying the Fed is on the cusp of making the worst policy decision ever, the largest mistake. And I read these things. I know him. I've read articles about him for decades now. This is not his normal thing. He doesn't like to be that in your face. So I'm freaked out by the fact that he's getting this loud. So I uh, don't know if you saw it over the weekend. If you have, what do you think? Yeah, yeah, I like Muhammad. I follow him. You know, he's, like you said, he's he's brilliant, very level-headed. Oh. He's, also, he's also manages a fund, so he gets it. <laughs> yeah. he, you know, he manages money, so he understands it. And he's one of the people I follow and, and you know, listen to very closely as well as, you know, Larry Summers. Mm -hmm. You know, he was, he was part of the, uh, you know, well, he was Treasury Secretary, I guess. Yeah, uh, he was. At one point. He's at Harvard now. And, um, you know, then there's Paul Krugman, who, you know, Muhammad and Krugman, mm. um, you know, they have a relationship, but Krugman is on the opposite side of that. He says that we still don't need to do anything that we're, you know, we haven't done enough and it's all going to go away, you know, but uh, yeah, I mean, he's getting very loud because it is very dangerous. I mean, we're on, you know, we're looking at damage done beyond a level that anybody's ever done single-handedly at the Fed, even Greenspan. I mean, he was one of the worst, mm -hmm. you know, Fed chairs that we ever had. And I guess, you know, his philosophy is that Volcker, you know, was really the only one that had a full grasp of what, what a Fed's responsibility and policy should look like. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, that was before my time in terms of my awareness of the sure. economy. I haven't really Mine studied too. Volcker, <laughs> Volkernomics, you know, I haven't mm -hmm. really studied that, but um, yeah, it's getting very dangerous and he's not the only one. Summers is starting to, you know, starting to sound the alarms. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of other people are, are starting to sound the alarms and, uh, you know, even, you know, Wall Street hedge fund managers, you know, like Bill Allen, mm -hmm. you know, he's, he's starting to, uh, you know, sound the alarms. I mean, it's, it's, you know, it's getting pretty tricky out there. Yeah. And so again, let's, yeah, there's a lot of people. And again, Mohammed El Alarian for me is like those other guys, they're on my radar as well, but they're, they're, mo they're more in your face kind of, kind of human beings, including Larry Summers, right? Just, Bill Ackman. I'm sorry. Bill, I, meant, yeah. I meant Bill Ackman. Yeah. Bill Ackman. That's who I thought you meant. Yeah, they're 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 like they're they're always in the media going for the headline, going for the statement. Not Mohammed. He is very reserved. Um, and again, I've been reading his stuff for 20 years. I this 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 article, this video, I think it was uh, I think it was on Bloomberg. I think this 12 or 15 minute interview, it actually sent shivers down my spine. I was like, oh, my God. Yeah, he's in a, he's, you know, he's, what he's saying essentially is the Fed has painted themselves in, into a box. They know that if they, you know, take corrective action, it's going to create a market collapse. They know that. Um, and they know that if they don't take action, it's going to cause a market collapse. Yeah, exactly. So they're, what he's, you know, so they're just waiting because nobody wants to go down as, as, as that. Right. And, you know, that is exactly what, you know, they're facing. And, you know, Powell, I mean, he's, he's a smart guy too. And, you know, he, he seems intelligent, but man, he, you know, they are flat out ignoring the writing on the wall and, you know, maybe they're smarter than everybody, not me, you know, so I listen to people like them. That's where I get my information. I form me my too. opinions, mm -hmm. you know, people, people like El Arian and, and other economists out there. And um, I do not listen so much to regulators and politicians you know, because again, they're in kind of a little bubble and they're, they're mm -hmm. not quite getting it. Powell is very connected on Wall Street and he has a lot of personal, you know, gain and reputation at stake here. Um, so he, I mean, he knows good and well what he's doing and he knows whose pockets all of this is going into. So yeah. don't discount that. He comes from Wall Street. Yeah. Uh, you know, so, so he knows what's going on and he yeah. knows that he can't do anything. He's stuck. Yeah. Mohammed All real you can do is just kind of ignore it. Hope it goes away. Kind of like <laughs> it's going to remember when you were a little kid. Yeah. If I close my eyes you know, maybe they won't see me. Yeah, you know, exactly. Like hide and seek. Yeah. You, are you, are you saying you didn't eat the chocolate cake and you got chocolate cake on the side of your mouth? Yeah. I, I remember those times. No, I mean, it's literally when you played hide and seek as a kid, you would close your eyes when they were looking for you thinking if I can't yeah. see them, they can't see me. I remember. Or, yeah. You know, if you're on the, yeah. yeah. 
And I think that's what the Fed's doing is they're just kind of closing their eyes and hoping that inflation will do the damage for them. So yeah. then they can try to somehow come to the rescue. But the problem is, you're, you know, they're out of bullets. Yeah, they're, yeah, really Mohammed's point of view, really, again, Mohammed was very clear. He says they're on the cusp of making the worst poly decision. So he's giving them an out. He says the window was wide open. He says it's barely open now. And he was very clear. And again, the fact that Mohammed was very clear makes me nervous. He's basically saying the Fed has got to taper faster, faster. It's got to get ready to raise rates faster because he's saying inflation is taking off, right? Uh, actually, this morning, I just jot jotted these down. Um, well, here's he the funny thing too. Like, so- this is really interesting because the Fed, when it was created, you know, in 1997, it, it had a mandate from com, com, Congress when it was created, promote effectively the goals of maximum employment, stable prices, mm -hmm. and moderate long-term interest rates. That now was what, their mandate. What, That's what the year only was, thing. What year was that? It wasn't um, 1997. 1977. Oh, 77. Okay. Since 1977, they have operated under a mandate from yeah. Congress. Right. To promote effectively the goals of maximum employment, stable prices, moderate long-term interest rates. So right. uh, what, what do we have? We don't have moderate <laughs> long-term interest rates. Yeah. We and have again, yeah. more jobs than people that want to take them, mm -hmm. you know? Uh, so you, you've got, a, you've got for the first time in the history of this country, you have, you know, however many millions of jobs available and only, you know, a million, let's say 5 million jobs available and only a million people, you know, mm -hmm. uh, I actually have the numbers. It was a JOLTS report, J-O-L-T-S. It came out on Thursday. 10.7 job open, 10.7 million job openings, uh, 8.4 million folks looking for work. Yeah. So, I mean, how, how, how do you do that? You know, and then uh, what was what was the other one? So maximum employment, oh, stable prices. Well, they, they lost on all three. <laughs> so, yeah, they're not, not good. You know, so their mandate is and only ever was those three things. And now they've become the largest Zillow buyer of everything. <laughs> Pump, buy, 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 buy. Yeah. Uh, it, it's very interesting because I actually have an econ degree, right? That's my undergrad. So I studied Volcker. Uh, and I actually went back here recently, the last four or five months. And I studied the, I'd never gone past Volcker, right? Volcker was a topic in school because he was the guy that broke the back of inflation, right? So he was somebody we studied. But actually, I, recently, I went back and studied the Fed president's pre-Volcker. And what Jerome Powell has done is the same mistake that the guy, not the one right before Volcker, because that guy only lasted nine months, but the one before him, um, he was a business guy. And what he made his, his bones on is, I'm going to worry about employment only, and rates will take care of itself. What did Jerome Powell do about a, about a year ago, maybe 18 months ago? He basically flipped. He went from priority A being stable prices, priority B being full employment. Because you could only have, as any parent knows, one number one priority. This 1A, 1B nonsense is just that nonsense. Volcker flipped it. And once he made that flip, he was toast. He is trying to get to full employment and be stable prices be damned. And that is, we're seeing the ramifications of that right now. Yeah, it's interesting. The other thing that, you know, Ariane is warning about, you know, are interest rates and you know, the servicing of the debt. So, you know, everything's fine and hunky dory as long as interest rates are, you know, nominal. Right. You have to start raising interest rates now. You know, that's the interest rates on the debt, you know, that that we are servicing. So at some point that becomes unsustainable and you're just printing, you know, to sustain the printing debt. debt. Yeah. Once you print, once you print money to service the debt, game over. Right yeah. now, even though our debt to GDP is 120 some odd percent or whatever it is, we can still service it because rates are one percent or whatever they are. One yeah. percent, you know, the Fed has been, done. you know, they've been the largest buyer of bonds, you know, as of late. And if they continue on that path, then what does that do? Where does that push the money? Yeah. Yeah. So, again, this is um, as we get ready to end the year, it's uh, it's becoming very interesting times. Um I guess based on our conversations today, you believe inflation is bad and getting worse. Would that be a fair assessment of your thoughts? Oh, yeah. I think everybody does. I don't think there's anybody rational thinker out there denying it now. Everybody knows because everybody's paying it. Everybody's paying it. You know, it's just, you know, these for whatever reason, these politicians just won't admit it. You know, they just won't uh, acknowledge that it's happening. And, 
you know, it's gonna be interesting times, you know, now what does this mean to the markets, to the values, to, you know, real estate and all these things, you know, between now and the end of the year, I think until the Fed does something, until things change from a monetary policy, it's still bull market on, it's still yeah. values, price go up, number go up. And Santa Claus rally, nobody's, I don't see anything happening in what, six weeks is all we have left in the year. But that doesn't mean that the risks don't get bigger, that the, there's not some market accident out there waiting to happen. But yeah, that, I, that, it's very rare that I, that I look, because I, I read this stuff every day. But watching uh, Mohammed talk about the, the largest poly, policy mistake ever yesterday, that did send shivers down my spine. So yep, be careful, be careful. I guess last thing we talked about, oh man, six months ago or so, is Jamie Dimon sitting on 500 billion in cash. I think it's almost a trillion dollars now. Is that still kind of the right answer? If you think there's a market accident and there's a bubble everywhere, you just sit on cash for a while? Is that, you know? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, Buffett's the same way. And a lot of people, you know, a lot of people are discounting them and saying they're relevant because they've just missed this. They they're missed old. That. Yeah. Yeah. You know, but cash is king. And, you know, when when the chips are down and, you know, when, when things are dipping, you know, you need cash to take advantage of opportunities yeah. uh, because, okay. you know, when the deleveraging begins, somebody's got to you know, pick up all the little acorns when the tree gets shaken out. So there you go. Uh, cool. That's where you want to be. You want to be in cash when, when we hit bottom. Yeah. Folks, you got to do yourself a favor, follow Mr. Greg Dickerson. He talks about some amazing stuff that I am not uh, experienced enough to talk about. Again, Greg, yep, where to go again, you know, the most important thing to know is the top. Yes. It's more important to know the top than it is the bottom. That's the key. Because, you know, if you're buying at the top, there ain't no bottom, <laughs> you know, you know, for, for you at that point, you know, moving yeah. forward and, you know, you don't want to hit bottom after you bought the top and wait years for it to come back and just be stuck in a trade and have no cash. So, yeah. you know, just, just understand, you know, it's very difficult to call the exact top and you don't need to, but you need to be somewhere in that curve, mm -hmm. you know, so that you can exit and then you can buy back in and just, you know, whatever it is, whether it's real estate, whether it's stocks, cryptos, it doesn't matter, you know, it's peaks and valleys, you know, and it's, cycles and time frames, you know, yeah. so bad times never last, good times never last. It's peaks and valleys and cycles. And if you even look at the bull market we've been in and everything other than real estate, real estate's been pretty much straight up for a while. We had a little hiccup 2010, 11, but it's been pretty much straight up since 08, 09. Mm -hmm. um, the markets, you can see these little corrections as they go. So, you know, you want to sell at the tops of those, buy back down in the bottoms and just kind of catch those. You know, and the real question is, at some point, if we face a deleveraging, if El Arion and some of those people are correct, um, you know, is there going to be more of a long term sustained bear market, you know, which is, again, just a decline in, you know, GDP and values, you know, below 20 percent for a sustained length of time, um, you know, not just a couple of months. And, you know, can we mm -hmm. climb back out of that? Does the Fed even have any power, you know, to bring us back out of that? Or do we just need to delever and reset and go? So it'd be interesting to see how this plays out. Yeah. Well, do, again, do yourself a favor, follow Greg Dickerson. How should they do that? Yeah, gregdickerson.com. All my info is there. YouTube podcast, go check it out. Thank you, buddy. Take it. Take care. All right. mm -hmm.